good afternoon. I am Ari Plonsky, Deputy Director of the Institute of Advanced Studies. And uh, uh, we are very happy today, firstly, to receive you on a Friday afternoon, and second, to have uh, the presence with us of Dr. Oradar uh, from the Israel Innovation Authority. Uh, Dr. Oradar uh, will uh, talk with us, will be a more of a conversation about the development of the institutional model in Israel of how to promote innovation, a model that became very known and also how this model is being now expanded. Dr. Oradar, she was uh, firstly uh, a student in medical, uh, as a medical, finished as a medical doctor. Uh, then she did her in, in Israel, in the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Then she went and did her doctorate in the UK. Then she was firstly a researcher at the Weizmann Institute, then she worked in industry, then she was very active in venture capital and advising uh, investment funds, both from Israel and from abroad. And uh, so she has, I would say, the perspective of innovation from many points of view. And uh, so, uh, it's, uh, uh, one would say, the right woman in the right place uh, in the Israel Innovation Authority, where she has been for some years, so she has uh, followed the uh, process of uh, transformation of Israel, as the uh, title says, uh, from promised land to uh, startup nation, and more she'll tell us. Uh, this uh, event is being... Uh, uh, also uh, transmitted, so if you have questions uh, or comments, uh, please send them by email to iearespondi arroba uspi.br and we'll be glad to uh, have you participating. And uh, Dr. Ora came to Brazil uh, by the invitation of the Medical School of University of Sao Paulo, that uh, held yesterday a very uh, intense and I think very fruitful uh, meeting on the challenges uh, for innovation in the health uh, area. And uh, it, so Dr. Ora came also because of her background and uh, the areas that she until very recently was responsible in the Israel Innovation Authority was exactly this area of health, uh, so we are very thankful to the uh, to our uh, USPI Medical School, Faculdade de Medicina, here represented by Marina Caldera, our dear friend who is uh, responsible for the area of innovation in the medical school for, uh, anyhow, giving us the possibility of uh, having the opportunities that she came to the medical school and bring her also to uh, this part of the university and have kind of a free and open uh, talk uh, more according to the questions that you have than, uh, uh, and not kind of a, a formal and, and a long presentation. Uh, so, okay, thank, you. thank you very much again and Okay, please. thank you. I just want uh, uh, to, t to add to what I said. I've been for the last 15 years with the what is now called Israel Innovation Authority. Before that, it was called the Office of the Chief Scientist at the Ministry of Economy, and it's important that it is in the Ministry of Economy. And 13 years out of the, the head of life sciences sector. So many of the frameworks and the activities that uh, were promoted in the life sciences sector were built on the, on the evaluation of myself and my team. Uh, I had a team of almost 30 people, all exper experts, in several fields in life sciences. And, okay, so that's just to add uh, why uh, probably I, I was here, I'm here. Uh, so the Israel Innovation Authority is a young child, is only one year old, but it came 
as a continuation, complete continuation of the office of the chief scientist, which was a department at the Ministry of Economy. And then they decided to formulate it as authority. It has long been desired to, to make an authority that uh, will give it more freedom to making decisions, so it looks sort of, it's under the ministry, but still it has a, a committee that govern them, and the decision can be much faster than going through all the official uh, routes. So uh, it is a more than 40 years old organization, which was established in order to promote innovation. Innovation in Israel is very important. Uh, only during the last few years we had, we, discovered some natural resources, gas. Before that, we had nothing, so we had to rely on innovation. And it accounts to 50% of the industrial export in Israel, 13% of the GDP. However, only 8% of the employees are within the high-tech industry. So high-tech industry, I, I will use the high-tech industry also to include biotech industry, all the things that is the high level. And uh, this is a problem because most of the population, 92% of the working force are not involved in this very attractive donation or contribution to the economy. Um, the office of the chief scientist was based, was, when, when it was uh, originated, basis in a, based on collaboration between private and and the, the private and the public sector. And indeed, when you look on the investment in R&D in Israel, civilian R&D, okay, we don't talk about all the other things, which is <laughs> vast investment. Uh, Israel is leading when, uh, per capita in percentage of investment in R&D, in percentage of GDP investment in R&D uh, among all the OECD uh, countries. And, but when you look at the distribution, most of it comes from the, from the private sector. Only a small percent coming from the, from the government, and that's not usual for all the other countries. And so it wasn't like this 40 years ago. 40 years ago, higher percentage of the investment came from the, from the public center. But gradually, private sector came in, more in and in, and the public se sector is, uh, is only sort of initiator to recruit investment in, high -tech, in the high-tech industry. Um, I think I just talk about the new uh, targets of the Israel Innovation Authority based on the fact that, so, so the Innovation Authority is the, is the arm that is supposed to keep Israel on a high level of innovation in order to keep the economy prospered. And they've identified, A, that we need more to involve a larger part of the population. And doing that is to increase the investment of high-tech technology in the traditional industry, which is the world of most of the workforce is, and in the service industry. And the second thing is that the, you know, the authority, something that they have never done, we have never done, or the chief scientists have never done, is looking on what is missing in the ecosystem. And what they, are what they realize is missing is uh, capability. We don't have enough uh, computer engineers. We don't have enough uh, people that can join the new era of uh, big data neural network, artificial intelligence. We have many of them, but because uh, Israel is so, is so good in that, many, many, uh, more, almost 300 uh, global companies have set their R&D center in Israel and recruitment, recruiting workforce. So the authority also uh, needs to, to deal with that uh, shortage and try and uh, educate more, not education is, the, is another authority, but maybe train more people to move from other disciplines to this discipline, and that's what is been doing now. Um, I think we can start with questions, so you want me to give more numbers? We can start with questions. Let me just, uh, uh, before beginning the question, just uh, thank uh, some people here, Professor Luis Carlos, 
who just arrived. He is a dean of the Biomedical Science uh, Institute. Uh, Professor Glauco Arbix, who is sitting there, is uh, <clears throat> a colleague uh, very much involved in, in this area from the uh, Humanities School and was uh, president of uh, FINAPIA, the Brazilian Innovation Authority. Dr. Claudio Rodriguez, who is sitting there, he was also yesterday in the conference, he's the uh, president and the creator of the largest incubator, uh, high-tech incubator in Latin America, 114 or so companies there, among others. And uh, uh, you, you met some of them. And the students are from international relations from uh, another faculty who is close here to us. So please. Uh, oh, I just want to add a yeah. few more uh, facts. Uh, one is that regardless of what I've said, it is very important to keep our stage as, as startup nation. So that's not, all the other tasks will not uh, interfere with this task. And the other thing is that uh, part of what the Innovation Authority is doing, or major part, is giving grants, is funding activities. And funding activities starting at applied research in academia with the view of in, of commercializing it or uh, translating it to something that will be commercialized until large companies, so large companies can also get fund, be funded by the authority. And basically we are ignorant to, to, the, to the technology. So the, 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 it's, it's not, it's based on the market needs. So if good projects are coming, they are being evaluated according to their uh, quality and not according to the field that they come from, and we always require matching from the private sector. I said it's private-public partnership. We always require a matching from the private sector. It is small at the stage of applied research. It is small at the stage of incubation, but it's becoming bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger as the company is bigger. Yeah, it's a conversation. Claudia, are you? Oh, thank you. Um, what, what are the... Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, Claudio Rodriguez is a director of the CETEC. Uh, what are the uh, most important points to follow, follow up the uh, one startup to reach the point you, you believe in the beginning? How we started? Uh, or no, the, during the period of, the, of your program, the startup is selected in your program. What are the most important guides to follow this, this, uh, this way? For, he, for the startup or for us? For a startup. For the startup. A, Startup needs to have the good people. This is, this is something which is essential. The staff, the team, is what is majorly important. Now, uh, they need to have two things. If it's technology-based, they need to have the technological people, but they also have to have the leading people, the management people, the people who can understand also the market and can bring more money to, to, to create the development. So it's something that... The idea has to be innovative because the market will not accept something which is not innovative. Competition is huge. Our, the competition is worldwide. It's not Israel. Israel is too small for its product. So we look always globally. And from my experience, and I think from experience of the people around me, the team is the most important thing. If the team is good, they will be able to, to follow a work plan and to, get, and to raise funding that they need to do it. May I? Well, I'm, I'm Glauco Arbix. Uh, I teach at the University of Sao Paulo at the sociology department. And I run here inside the Institute of, the, of uh, Advanced Studies, the Observatory for Innovation as well, together with uh, Professor Ari. I, I don't know if I fully understood the, the role developed by the, the Innovation Authority in Israel. Uh, because uh, I, I, I don't have any uh, vision 
I, I can't uh, see clearly the tasks uh, you are supposed to accomplish, you know. Uh, I, I, I am a little bit confused because I did introduce me saying that uh, I run uh, the Brazilian Authority, the Brazilian Innovation Authority. But, well, agency. agency. Actually, I run a kind of bank uh, uh, with uh, offered loans to companies uh, and at the same time uh, uh, grants to universities and to companies, you know. I don't know if you, if you work in the same way or if you just uh, develop a kind of uh, matchmaking or articulation or uh, formulation of new programs and, and, and plans to, to the, the government. So we give grants, that is the basis, we give grants. But what I said is that we need matching from the private sector, so we never, we, part of our decision is what we see, in, uh, anyone, no, no one can get grant bef without match, some matching from the private sector. This is our goal, to see that the private sector is actually leading and helping. Now, we consider our funding smart funding. It's not just the money. It's smart money in the sense that when we do the evaluation, we look on three imports. So we have exp experts that are doing the evaluation, and we look on three major issues for in all stages of, of uh, companies or projects that we see, even in the academia. Uh, we look, look at technology, obvious, uh, how, how uh, novel is the, te uh, the, uh, is the technology. We look at the market, if there is a market from the for this product or for the technology that is being to be developed. And we look at the team, and the team is very important. And we look and we want to see that the team can do what they want to do. And depends, so, so, so they have to have the essential people within the team. You can always take consultant. You can always uh, have uh, have some uh, activities out. Of the, you don't have to have to do everything within the company. But still, we want to see that they know what they want to do and they understand what they want to do. Uh, so basically, uh, and, and this is very important: the, the the way the grants are being given. And I know that there are many grants given by the EU, and Israel is a very good. Uh, customer of the European uh, platform, but the, and I do evaluation for the European as well, but th they don't interfere. And this, it's not that interfering, it's not that we don't, we don't manage the companies, but we try to give the money in a way that it will really contribute. Now, I don't know the way you did the evaluation and your, your basis for decision, how to give money and to whom to give money. But the idea was that when you start giving money to applied research in academia, uh, it's interesting to see that the professor with all the team will come to the evaluation session. And why? Because the, he or she wants them to learn and to understand the type of evaluation. It, it's an, a face-to-face -face evaluation. It's not a remote evaluation. They want to see that, to listen to the question, type of question that people are coming from the industry are asking. So the evaluators are people who, are, who have industry experience and good academic background, good academic slash technology background. So, and most of them are not very young, so they have experience. And it's interesting to see the interaction uh, between the, the professor who really is expert in what he proposed the students who are very anxious to do the work, and the evaluator who has this long way of understanding the industry and a long time of experience. Well, my name is Luis Ferreira. I'm a professor, full professor here at the University of Sao Paulo. And right now, I'm, I'm a dean of an institute, Biomedical Science Institute, where we do also do biotech uh, science. And well, based on what, what I have seen, listened, I, sorry, I came late to your presentation. Um, the presence of some people in the academy 
helping to make such links with the private sector and kind of uh, orientation on how to do science in a way that it will produce innovation need specialized, pe specialized people to do this, which uh, we call uh, the TTO, the Tech Transfer Office. This is something that has not been well developed here in most of our un of the universities, Brazilian universities, including ours. So how is this uh, organized at the academia in Israel? Do you have the universities for public mainly public or private. I don't know exactly how this academic universities are organized there. They are all public or private. Do this. Do they have a TTO or prepared to somehow put together scientists and, and, and private companies to work together? And what is the role of these TTOs? Okay, so I don't... I don't have uh, the slide with me, but I showed it. So this is a great question because uh, even based on the discussion that we had yesterday, uh, one missing point that was identified here in, in Sao Paulo, I, don't, I can't say the whole Brazil, is missing of professional TTOs. And indeed in Israel, it's, they are very, very professional. And we have TTOs six, since the 60s. And the, one of them, the Weizmann Institute, I think is Get Revenue, is one in, at, the, at the top ten, uh, it, they used to be number three, but I'm not sure, so I don't want to commit for numbers. And even more than that, uh, we export head of TTOs to all over the to all over the globe because it's very. It's, it's, we have uh, the, the the previous TTO, the, the Weizmann head of TTO, CEO of TTO of the Weizmann Institute, is now in uh, in UCLA. Uh, the previous one from Tel Aviv University is now in Harvard. So th there was one, the pre previous was one in Sydney, and one is in Toronto. So, so, it's, so it's really, uh, they're really go doing their job well. So I'm not, how they do it. They have a team uh, for all technologies that understand, not, not experts, but can understand the technologies that are uh, at, the, at the institute. The team will contact the researchers, not only sit and wait for them to come, but also will contact them and try to see if they have an idea that can be somehow commercialized. Now, the easier thing is when, you, when a researcher has an idea and he wants to write patent on that or, or to see how he can, what he can do, how he can take it further to something that will be applicable, the doors are open so they can go to the TTO and then the TTO, TTO will secure it with patent, at the beginning provisional patent, but patent. They will also, they can also advise them, if not they, they will take advice of what they need to, to wrap the, the technology in a way that it can be patented. And they will look for funding for doing the steps that will lead the, the research group to a stage that they will be of interest to, to outside investors. So what kind of routes are? One route is the grant of the Israel Innovation Authority, because this is a grant for three years, uh, coming almost uh, $300,000. that can bridge between the, the basic research and something that can convince investors that, it, the, that it, has some, it has something in that. Uh, and if, if it's not there, they will try and see uh, some TTOs have their own small fund, not so small, but have their own fund that can support the, the researcher. So this is the fund. We are talking about a stage that the, that the research will be, for the researcher, it will be very hard to get competitive grants because the discovery has been done. So he has done the discovery. Now he wants to do something, the next stage, to, to make it something that, to wrap it in a way that it will be potentially applicable. I, I'm, and this, that's what the TTOs are doing. So it's, they are very, very important link in, in, the, whole, in the whole system. The TTO plays a key role in the conversion of science generated in a university to really business. Yes. Either as a startup or as something to be handled by big companies. Yes. And, and who are these people? 
I mean, how do you prepare so them? So, Where so they come? They are private. They part no, of no, the no, university. No, no, no. Part of the university. The university hired them. So the the, oh. the the TTO belongs. It's it, it's sort of company, but it belongs to the university. And it's normally in, in most of the universities. It's under the vice president for R and D. So it's a uh, and. Um, Additional to what I, I said, that whenever somebody is interested in technology, so that they publish the technologies, you can have some information about the technologies that is available. Actually, in Israel, most of the top research institutes publish the technology together in one website, so they gather to do it on one website. And if somebody is looking for technology at the academic stage, they can they, they can screen and they can contact and it's very friendly website so they can contact a, oh. a person and then uh, oh. so it's it's really it, it's really doing exactly what you suggested that's what they are doing yeah. Yeah. so it's not private it's not for own, own profit it's not they for, are so employees not for, of the university they are employees of the it's it's um, employees of the of the company which belongs to the university oh it's a company it's, it's within that the is university. run by it's the all, university. Yes, yes, yes. Has in independence to hire people uh, and to fire I think people. So, yes, yes. Independent of the policy of the of the yes, university. Yes, because they are not researchers. Okay. There are people who have the capacity to do it. Um, in many TTOs, you can see lawyers. Yes, yes. And now I think two of the TTOs are headed by lawyers. Yeah. I think even even those some of those that were exported. Yeah. Also, uh, are lawyers. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's clear some, in some TTOs, the people who come from the industry, but it it varies. Yeah, but of of course, it seems to me that, in your opinion, this is a key step to really develop innovation, yes. starting from university. Without these things, are more complicated because they do not talk very much. Scientists and people working in companies. These are the people that make the connections and yeah. try to improve. So these are the people who do it. And even when, uh, you know, some researchers are very good uh, contacts with companies. Some, some, some have contacts with companies because they have been advisors to companies and they have contacts with companies. And um, whatever uh, arrangement they are doing, it will go through the TTO. Because the TTO knows all the relations between the researchers and the and the industry, and they manage all the things. So, so the either push or pull. It depends if they have enough assets. So I will call it assets. If they have enough assets, maybe they will not uh, scratch the the drawers of the research, of the scientist. It it depends. Hi, uh, thanks for the introduction, Noila. Uh, my name is Guilherme Rose. I am from Emerge Initiative. We are a NGO that supports entrepreneurial scientists, or better, sci entrepreneurs. We are studying the, like, very, a lot of models and, and uh, studies that, how, that, that shows us how to, to support uh, science based uh, university spin offs. We haven't found uh, the, the, the perfect one. Uh, and you sort of answered my question. I wanted to know what is Israel doing to support uh, science-based university spin-offs? You told us about the TTO model that works there, but if you have any more information about how that works in Israel as a country. And could you also give us some examples or some cases of uh, uh, university spin-offs that are doing very well in Israel uh, that came from a, univer from a university and has a science uh, um, uh, uh, has science in its products and okay. services. Thank you. Okay, uh, so uh, I just mentioned the grant for applied research, but then there are, there are grants for more for companies which are many of the companies spin out of universities are going to the incubator system because at the incubator they get 85% of the budget and the incubator pay the additional 15. So they don't have to pay anything. They come as they are. And if the, if the incubator is not all of them are good, but many of them are very good, if, when, they, when they go into a good, into, in, a good incubator, they can get all this. What is incubator? Incubator giving them the support. It's not a real estate issue. It's an issue of supporting them in uh, understanding the technology, understanding the market. Uh, normally, incubator, in addition to uh, helping them 
with the original budget for the two to three years of the incubator time will help them uh, raise funding for the next step. So this is one option. The other option is to, you have to raise money somehow. Because as I said, the Israel authorities, basically in Israel is the, may, the only way you can get uh, public funding. So, but you don't, you cannot get public funding if you are not through the incubator uh, without having matching. So the matching will come from, you have to get some, some additional funding and then you can apply to the uh, innovation authority and be funded. Uh, you get to be evaluated every year. Uh, now, most of the technology, you know, if, if we talk about life sciences, it is science-based. So everything comes from the university. But interesting, uh, interestingly, uh, Mobileye, for instance, I don't know if you heard about the Mobileye, it's, uh, it, it's the autonomic uh, car uh, company, which was recently acquired by Intel, 15 mil billion, I think, either 12 or 15, uh, 13, okay, 13 billion dollar. It came from the Hebrew University. So the entrepreneur, the founder, is a professor at the Hebrew University, and he had the idea, and um, he, so, so and, and many, many other companies, most of them are coming from the university, based on the university uh, technology. So it's, um, it's rare to see, def definitely in life sciences, it's, it's rare to see somebody just dream about something and came and established a company, because you need to have some basis. And normally you get the basis through research. Uh, for applications, for internet applications, you can see many of them were not coming from the university. That's true. So it depends, it's area dependent. Hi, it's Marina Caldeira. I'm the innovation manager of the School of Medicine of the University of Sao Paulo. I would like to add a comment about the TT offices. <laughs> and we have in Sao Paulo this association of TT offices for public uh, institutions. And they, they really have a, a really hard work training people from the whole state for the last two years. But it all depends on projects. It was a CNP key project, it ended, and now I don't know what's going to happen. But in this year, we, we have these encounters every month. Uh, what's the, the common problem we see? It's TT office here are not independent. The TT office belong to the university and have the rules of the university. And besides, we don't have the, the, the training, the specific training. And it takes us, for instance, one month to get a non-disclosure agreement signed. It, in Israel, I believe it takes you two days. No, what do you mean, what kind of agreement? Non-disclosure agreement. No, no, it's not so easy. It, it's not so because easy. Because with the companies and institutions I, I have in contact in the United States, they sign it in the same day. It's, so it's, uh, at, um, it's not in the same day. Sometimes the negotiations are quite tough. It depends. And unfortunately, we don't have a unique, we wanted to have a unique uh, Model. type of, yeah, yeah. But, if you but, have a send it to me, please. But we don't, we, they didn't agree. But I just want to, to re-emphasize, they're not completely independent. They belong to the university. They're not for profit. So they really have to do, the budget comes from the university because all the revenue are going to the university. So it's not that, not, they're not completely independent, but they have a CEO, they have board of directors, so it's, it's constructing, constructed sort of a company, but they completely belong to the, to the, to the university, including budget. But, uh, so, I see. I, so, I, so the contract is not easy and depends. Sometimes it goes quick, you know, sometimes it's, it depends on the terms. Um, you know, some, when, when, it's com is, when, when it is a contract with a, sim with a similar uh, 
collaborator, then it's quicker, obviously, when it's mm -hmm. with somebody new, sometimes they the, the don't know the requirement, and it takes longer. Yeah. It's just that we are very few people. Uh, I believe an university has four professionals for the whole university. Yes, four. So for the GTO role itself, I would say that less than that. Yeah. Okay. okay, so that's the issue. You need people who understand yeah. that some technology can go and look for. for yeah, we, we have just a, a passive job. Okay, so we, this is so this is something that is missing in this in the in the. Organization dealing with this, people that know both sides what is being done in science here with our our scientists and outside who are interested so, in that, how they can so offer really they are the professional problem. this is what so you know what they need to know so it's a uh, Hi, my name is Elena Novak. I'm studying international relations at the Rio Branco University. And I, I'd like to know, how do you think that history can contribute to Israel's success? I mean, the geographic position or the conflicts. So what do you think? Okay, so this is also a good question. <laughs> because you know, uh, when you don't have choice, you have to concentrate on things that will allow you to survive. And because we didn't have choice, uh, immediately we start looking globally, which is not so good because we better, probably would be better if we would look regionally. But so immediately we, we, are, we are at the Middle East, but we are very much involved in what's going on in Europe, in the United States, in terms of technology, science and technology. Uh, we are a member of the European uh, platform uh, grants, and Israel is doing excellent, known, uh, recognized by other countries. And you know, when you are sort of minority in your uh, community, you need to work harder in order to, to succeed. And also, as I mentioned in the beginning, we didn't have any natural resources. So the only option for us to develop our economy was to, to, to innovate. And agriculture, well, we were agriculture country, but agriculture for a country like Israel is not, is not a, economically wise. Uh, we don't have, we didn't have uh, water because we are partly de de deserted country. So we developed technologies uh, that will uh, desalinate water, sea water. And now I think almost 80% of our water are coming from uh, desalination. So it's a it's, it's question of necessity. Um, that's... Uh, well, okay, so the army, the army, yes, 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 I'll repeat the question, the yes. question was the army, <laughs> okay, no, I, I'll, I'll, I'll answer, I'll talk about, I'll, uh, yes. Uh, uh, just uh, about it, uh, the army. Uh, uh, when I uh, read the startup nation, I remember that because it's not too easy to be uh, uh, <laughs> uh, with so enemies around. Yes, in in the, in the war time. Yes, and they need uh, to 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 win the, the wars. Yeah? So they need science. Is, so there are special there. units in the army that are high-tech units, and many uh, people who have done this uh, service terms are the entrepreneurs of startups. So this is something, and so it's what, it, what the army gives is two things: one is technology, and the other thing is maturity in very early, at very early age, and necessity to find solution not direct solution, not solution that everybody finds, but different solutions. And, and, but not everybody is taught, but many of, of our children are educated to do this. 
And that's part of the, that's, that's right. So that's part of, that was the basis for many startups, specifically in the communication and the, in the, um, in, in the communi in, in communication, I think, in technology, all kinds of other technology. I think also electronics, uh, many startups are, were based al, on, on the army uh, training, both in, uh, in attitude as well. It's not just technology, but also attitude to how you define and how you manage uh, to, to innovate. Um, it wasn't so for biotech, because they didn't do biotech at the army. But you can see, which is interesting, I mentioned before the team, you can see people who were at the army in, in special unit of smart people, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it later, uh, that are joining, that, that are partnering somebody who has a scientific basis, and they are the innovators, of the, they are the entrepreneur of uh, companies within the biotech area. Uh, also, after the army, they go and study other things, they go and study medicine, they go and study uh, biology, chemistry, and mathematics and physics, and then they can innovate because they have this, this uh, urge to, to do things. Uh, also, something which is important to mention is the converging of technologies. It's very much uh, popular in Israel to combine all sorts of people who have been to the army and did electronics. And when he will go and study, or computer, when he will go and study medicine or, or biology or anything like this, the, the, the outcome will be something which will be different from anyone else who just studied biology or just studied computer sciences. Because it's the converging of, techno of the technologies within a person, not not within a team, but within a person. That also contributes. And they, they aren't too many, but there are few technologies that emerged for, uh, from technologies that were um, uh, army sort of technologies. I don't know if you're familiar with a, a company called Given Imaging. They have a capsule that traverse in, in, in the GI, in the, in the intestine, and take pictures of what is inside. So um, it came out from a company which did military, um, which worked with the military, and the scientist decided that he wants to go to a therapeutic area, to a medical area. And he thought that he will develop such a capsule. At the beginning, he thought that he should embed a small uh, engine in the capsule. Otherwise, because he, was, he, didn't, he wasn't a biologist. So how it will be traversed when you, you swallow it and you want to release it. Uh, but obviously, the body is doing the, the movement that, needs, that helps the capsule to move. So they don't need engine. But they did have good cameras and they took, took pictures and they could... Uh, and, and, and they could transmit the pictures uh, during the during the test. So I think this is okay, so this is um, answer your um, question. Uh, do you say that uh, Israel have um, a great relationship between universities, companies, army, and uh, venture capital? They work. Uh, like a synergic, in a synergic way, is that yes. that differentiate Israel? So university works with company very, very synergetically because uh, the, the, it's dual way. It's it's a the the universities want to develop technologies for companies, and when the companies are involved with the university, the companies can tell them what they want, and, they, and it, it leads some researchers to do other things, things within his, his expertise, but other things that he originally thought. So the, the collaboration is good. I also um, gave example yesterday of a platform that we have for consortia between several companies and several uh, Universities, several universities group or research groups, academic groups, and these are very successful. Uh, this is a very successful combination, uh, and with benefits for both sides. 
So we have, we have several of these in several, in many different areas. Uh, with the, Hi, my name is Manuela. Um, and I'm a student of international relations at Rio Brancos. Uh, the first thing that came into my, my mind when I saw the title was national security. I would like to know uh, what uh, the percentage of these markets, new markets, the startups, uh, what percentage is focused on national security and social engineering? and they, they're, they're focus on. So, uh, what, what the, the, the Israel Innovation Authority is not doing with military technology. But cyber now is a huge hype and a lot, a lot of activities are done within the cyber, which is sort of security, if, yes. if that's what you mean. Yes. Um, I don't think I can, I know exactly, but uh, it's, it's big, but it's not the biggest. It's okay. a, and what is social security? No, uh, social engineering. Social engineering, sorry. What yes. is social engineering? Uh, you can, social engineering is a method where you can use the, how people act over the internet, over the social media, and make, um, how would I, I would like to say, and, to make uh, like a theory about how people think and do and work on its daily life. So such uh, technologies are used for when, you when, when companies develop advertising, advertising uh, products. Yes. They want to reach the person, they want to learn about it. I know, I, I know that I don't know if they're doing it uh, still, but Facebook used to, to give them platform to go into people's um, yes. uh, behavior things. So, so there are, but this is not a big one. Uh, now, some of this type of technology is embedded within the digital health uh, products, because, uh, for instance, if you want to develop something, uh, that will co a product something is a product so <laughs> that will convince a, a person to do medical tests on a, as as they need to do people don't like to do colonoscopy and you want to convince them to do colonoscopy how do you reach these people and do it so this is also something that coming and sometimes it's si similar technology to convince somebody to buy a car because you need to understand what the people, what this person, uh, what will convince this person to move the site. Some people don't like to be frightened. Some people want to get rewarded. So this is, if that's what you meant, uh, this is the answer. So these technologies are around. I can't tell the number, uh, but they are penetrating into additional things than just the advertising. Okay, thank you. Hi, Guilherme from Emerge. Uh, I heard you saying at, at before the beginning of the session that Startup Nation is a great book, but now you want to be more than a Startup Nation, you want to be a productive nation, right? Uh, what are the next steps and how far has Israel Vision, uh, has, uh, do you have to see, like 10 years, 50 years, 100 years? Okay, so uh, I think the current uh, chief scientist, we also have still, uh, the CEO of the Israel Innovation Authority, Mark, I think he, he wants in 10 years to, or even less than that, to be able to, to change the scene. And changing the scene is having more than 8% of the employees, having more companies who are doing full development and not based on exit. Because what's, what's troubling in the Israeli innovation arena is that companies are doing exit when they are still young and they're taking, the technology is taking out of the country. And they are not based, they don't base themselves in Israel with recruiting more employees and becoming a bigger company, doing sales from Israel, doing production in Israel. So there are additional incentives now to come for companies to go this way. So there are two things. One is additional incentives to companies to do production and sales and to become whole full company and not just 
being sold earlier, and uh, trying to bring the, the other part of, of, of the workforce to, to join the, this high-tech uh, industry. Claudio Rodriguez, just complete my first question to you. You have good teams, you have a lot of ideas, you have a lot of startups. What are the mortality of these companies, like in other countries? So we said yesterday, I think the number of between 5 to 10 percent survive. Um, so there are many failures. And the failure is not such a bad idea, because somebody who failed will be better on his next uh, try. And also, uh, we look on failure as a potential to spill over. So people who worked in a company, and the company didn't succeed, they will join another company with more expertise, not, even, even not necessarily as entrepreneur. And we have the term serial entrepreneur. A serial entrepreneur can come and raise funds easier, even, even if he had failures, easier than somebody who's doing it first time. Yep. Well, this is life. You, can, you, you don't know if you succeed unless you try. And it's very true for technology, and sometimes the technology is great. I just heard yesterday, I mean, I just heard, yesterday morning, which was very tough for me, that the company which we supported for many years, developing drug for glioblastoma, and the second uh, indication will be uh, ovarian cancer, failed in phase three clinical trial. They didn't meet the end, po the, the end point. This is horrible because the technology is great, is genetic-based technology, it's, it's, it's so the, the, the the data, the science is so logic, it's so good. They did phase two with several hundred of patients. So it's not that just came out of the blue, and they failed in phase three. So this is life. This is life. Ah, Marina, Since you mentioned this, the failure in health sector, uh, I would like to know, a um, startup in health has, uh, besides all the, the problems, the debt of the, mo the valley of the, the debt, or yeah. what is that? Uh, you have all those problems, you have to, the clinical trials, the regulations. Uh, do startups in health has a special treatment in the Innovation Authority? Okay, so uh, in a way, yes, and I'll explain, but not, but in a way, in, in, I'll, I'll, I'll explain how. Um, there is sort of a market failure in health because it's very expensive and it takes a lot of time. So basically, a, a government funding should be more available to such companies because the private sector is less uh, willing to, to, to fund them. However, now many companies raise funds at the NASDAQ and they, they are so, sort of well with funding. But still, uh, the difference is that uh, they get uh, more money at the early stage, at the incubator stage, they can get they can get more high, higher amount of funding for a longer period. Then they, when they can come to compete with all the others, uh, they, it's appreciated that they will it will take them a longer time, and they have a lot of money that they need because clinic phase three even phase two are very expensive. 
So they will get their share, even though it's very expensive, and sometimes it's after 10 years or even more than 10 years. They will not tell them, okay, so many years that nothing happened to you. No, we understand. It takes time and it takes money. So this is sort of a different approach. I have just, a, okay. sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to add something that the uh, Israel Innovation Authority is very much involved in attracting global, uh, global companies, if, if the open R&D is okay, but global companies to collaborate, or global, not, not only global, but relevant companies to collaborate. And the international collaboration is very uh, important. Also bringing uh, the smartness and our incubators have, uh, our incubator is sort of uh, private entities, so they compete for getting, to, to, for getting license, and the license means that the innovation authority commit to fund projects within the incubator. And when, the, when there is a project, the funding is only per project, and when there is a project, the project can get 85% of the budget, which has a ceiling to that. For biotech companies, it's $2 million. For others, it's less. And, but the owners of the incubator, the current owners of the, of the most of the incubators are foreign players. So they know the market, they bring the knowledge, and they do incubation in, 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 in a place like in Israel. So it's really amazing to see. Uh, we have incubators owned by Metronics in collaboration with IBM, in collaboration with the local venture fund. We have an incubator in collaboration between Takeda, Johnson & Johnson, and another Israeli venture fund. Uh, we have Philips involved in incubator, we have Johns Boston Scientific, we have Amgen within incubator, so really the giants are involved at as early stage as incubator, which is very, very important. You answered my question before I posed the question. That was exactly the evolution of the incubation model in Israel, because it began in the 90s, if I remember, it was even a pre-door, still uh, kind of university incubators supported by the chief scientist, and then it moved uh, uh, gradually to be privately managed, and uh, now by, by, by consulting companies or something like that, and then now you're saying that it's kind of both an incubator and, and as a corporate venture uh, uh, place. Yeah. So, uh you, you talked about necessity, so I, I will ex expand the, the issue of necessity. The incubator program was, was originated in 90, I think early 90, because we have a huge immigration from Russia. All the million people came to Israel, and they couldn't be in, incorporated in, 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 in places. And part of them have great idea, they came with ideas that they didn't have the place to, to, to develop them. And f that was the reason to, gen to uh, creating the incubator system. So they were the actually engine behind it. I think, uh, I remember the time, it was already in my time, that the incubator was also willing to get technologies from the university. It wasn't like this before. And it took me a lot to convince the incubator management to, to, to look also on technology in the academia, which was a great idea because many technologies came with, from the academia, and you know, the Russians were integrated, integrating it. So, so they didn't base all their uh, development on, on incubators. And so, uh, and, but the owners of the incubator, because it was, it, it was established by the government, so many of the owners were, uh, public uh, entities. And then gradually, I think it was 10 years ago, they decided that they don't want, they want private sector in, not, not, the, not the public center, they want the private sector in. Because the private sector, in our opinion, know what is needed and know. And then they open tenders. And the t for the tenders, it did say that there need to be 
so and so life sciences and so and so uh, clean tech and such number of, of, of medical devices? No, it was based on the tender uh, suggest on the tenderies suggestion of what the people suggested. Obviously, uh, they didn't like very much internet incubators, but there are, there is one incubator which is dealing with publications. And there is incubator dealing with food, very sophisticated food, sort of, but bi bi I think it's almost biotechnology food. And s medical devices is very popular and digital health, healthcare IT is very popular now. Very popular both in Israel because Israel has so strengths in this field and also it's becoming very popular worldwide and many companies are coming to Israel to, to, do, to, to, to learn to, to, to recognize startups in this field and one good way is through the incubators. Guilherme Rosso, one more question. Um, what do you think Brazil and Israel can do better if working together? So we have agreement with Brazil. We have agreement with the, with the federal government and we have agreement with Sao Paulo. That's what I saw in my slide because I took the, the list okay. of countries that, that we have. And the best way is to find these people and to do more collaborative projects. And collaborative projects need, in order to find your partner, you need to, to meet. Otherwise, if you don't meet, you don't, you can, it, it, it's very difficult. You can, but it's very difficult to find a partner. And it's not always easy to do it through a matchmaker that sits one in Brazil and one in, uh, in Israel. It's much, it's, it's, the way is to really meet each other. And there are places where companies from Brazil, companies from Israel are going to conferences. Maybe this is one option to meet. Another option is delegations going from one country to the other country and doing uh, meetings. It's been very successful with China, and, and China is not smaller than Brazil, I guess. I mean, in terms of... And it's been very successful. So the, I, I, I joined twice delegations to China when there was, they were in life sciences, and we jumped from one area to the other. In every area, there were companies waiting for us, which was prepared in advance, and there were meetings. So uh, this is a good way to do it. This. Um, in the uh, ecosystem that uh, surrounds our companies that works with startups in Israel, what do you say it's the central point of the, the hub? Is university, is this companies, is venture capital, government? Uh, what is the, the main uh, node of this kind of uh, ecosystem hub? So it's everything. And it's the will to collaborate, and it's the will to understand each other. And this, uh, I, you asked me before about the venture uh, capitalist uh, sector. I didn't mention them. They are very important. They are really very important. And I don't know if you know, but the government of Israel was really the initiator of establishing this venture uh, capital industry at early 80s, 90s, 90s, I think. Uh, the government told people that if they want to establish a venture fund, it will give a dollar per dollar that they will raise. And now I think Israel is second to the U.S. or even first in per capita. In, I don't remember the exact, but really at the top of the venture. And the, the industry is very much relying on venture funding. So most of the private money will come from venture funds, capitals. Um, later on, company will go public, mainly in the U.S. Some of them do in the U.K. and, uh, and in the other, other countries, but most of them in the U.S. Some of them also in Israel, which is not a very strong uh, stock exchange. Um, you can't really... All, all those components are very, very much important. And what is the most important 
is the this talk between those component, components. So it's important, very important that the academia will talk to the industry as they do, and there are several platforms for that. And it's very important for all of them to talk globally. And as I said, the venture fund is important to, to, sur to survival of those companies. And what is also very good in venture fund is it's also what I call smart money. Because normally the partners within the fund are, understand the topic, understand the area of the companies that they invest in. So they can really be contributors to, to the company's uh, roadmaps and policies. Uh, not so much involvement in Israel, there are, but not, not as, as important as the regular venture capitals. But all venture capital firms have very good connections with the global companies. I know specifically for, for the health sector, whenever they invest, not whenever, but many times when they invest, they bring uh, along them also a venture, uh, a, a venture a company venture fund to, to invest with them. So they are the link between the between companies that are invested and bringing also venture funds. The issue uh, of uh, global appeared several times. Uh, market uh, global for Israel in particular condition. Uh, the fact that Israel is kind of uh, an engine of producing startups that are acquired by companies abroad and with a, what you mentioned, the challenge of uh, having part of the production local, etc. But there is one uh, 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 element that uh, uh, dialogues with your first point. The most important is the team that I would like you to comment. The issue of mob human mobility. It means uh, uh, if you look to Brazil, Brazil is always, or has always seen uh, the mobility of, uh, of uh, academics, or not academics, but of, of people well prepared, uh, uh, scientists or not, but well technicians or managers, anyhow, well prepared people uh, by the bad name uh, brain drain. So it's always something negative. Uh, on the other hand, it seems that Israel uh, uses the diaspora of Israelis in the US, etc., like India, uh, in a good way. So, uh, but on the other hand, also Israel tries to attract back something. Can you talk something about mobility and if the authorities sees, as you mentioned, they are missing engineers, they are missing this, they are missing that. How do you see the, this very important issue of uh, human talent uh, and uh, mobility and uh, global competition, etc.? So there are many questions and I'll yeah. try to do it one by one. So one thing is that um, many, we have a brain drain from Israel, specifically in the life sciences sector, people are graduating, it, it's many, many more than actually is, are needed in the industry. Uh, many of them are going to do postdoc out of Israel, most of them, uh, especially in the US. They are good and they start doing another postdoc and start staying there and even if they, when they want to come, and they, most of them want to come back, not always uh, they can come back because the academia is limited. They can go, there are limited positions in the academia and the industry is not always growing in the same pace as, as uh, because additional people are, are, are graduating. So this is one problem. I think they made a lot of effort to uh, identify the engineers and to record them back because that's easy, that you know that uh, they need. It's more difficult in life sciences. But we have a network of all the people who are abroad and do want to keep contact with Israel and do want to come back to Israel. There is a, net a network which is also in a way uh, handled by the Israel Authority. Uh, by, uh, they have their own network, but the, the connection and, and, uh, and all the incentives are also um, managed by the Israel Innovation Authority. So this is important. Uh, companies, you know, companies, when they want to look globally, they have to set a place somewhere else as well. 
מרקטינג פלייס, מרקטינג פרסון אאוט אוף דה קאנטרי טו, סמטיימס ונדה אין קליניקל סטייג' זה ניד סמבדי טו דו אול דה קונטקט אנד טו קונטרול אול דה The other, because you need to do clinical trials, is not locally, it's obviously out of Israel, mostly in the U.S., but many times in Europe as well. So, um, I want to just say that mobility, mobility in science is proven to be necessary. You know, scientists are going for sabbatical, they have collaborators all over the, the, the globe, and this is, this is a necessity, otherwise they will not, I think, for them to, to progress in their research, it's, it's necessary. It's also important for people who are developing technologies to know, what's to, to know their partners, to go to conferences, to meet partners, to know the partners, to know their competitors, to be exposed. So, Any other question? We are getting towards the end. So let me just uh, make uh, very, very few comments. Um, uh, the first uh, comment is that uh, uh, this meeting, this, uh, this conversation, not really a presentation, conversation was also besides the uh, essential help of the School of, of, of Medicine, it also is part of the program of uh, discussions that we have in uh, a center for technology management and policy and management at the university, which is a group of researchers from uh, engineering school and from the management school. And uh, management means economics, accountant, accountancy, and, and, uh, and uh, management itself. Um, the second comment is that uh, uh, obviously, I mean, some things of what we learned from you today uh, are at least, uh, uh, let's say, not always we can do it, but at least we understood that uh, it is important. For instance, the issue that was raised about the importance of the TTO. Uh, TTO is a kind of a relatively new phenomenon in, in, in Brazil. Uh, obviously, this university has already an older TTO, but uh, full-fledged TTOs began in Brazil really uh, around uh, 10 years ago. And uh, with an uh, innovation law that really, uh, after seeing so many uh, situations where intellectual <coughs> property was lost, uh, the government kind of imposed that every public university, at least public universities, have to have a TTO. And, uh, well, between deciding that they have to have a TTO, and even if they have, and having, uh, taking this uh, into account and putting professionals and having the budget and not only putting, uh, let's say, somebody that, well, we have to have somebody and putting some students to help. I mean, having some professional, it takes, it takes some time. So the new uh, law, uh, of innovation, which was enacted uh, basically this year, months ago, was operationalized, uh, 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 make something which is a public system in Brazil, which is very much uh, uh, rigid in terms of of, of rules, uh, creates kind of a <clears throat> kind of a career. So it is kind of now a recognized profession and not something uh, which was anyhow. Uh, some general name as an assistant of something. So it gives some, some, uh, 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 some presence. Um, uh, obviously, uh, the best uh, issue is having success, and success attracts success. So I believe the process uh, in general is moving, but uh, uh, if, if you compare, for instance, if I remember well, we assume at Tibu University is from the 60s or 70s. So, so it, it's basically, uh, if you are the 60s, we have now 50, more than 50 years. So, I mean, in this sense, the TTO is not trying to, to Professor Luis saying, well, uh, uh, we, sorry about that, but I mean, uh, we are kind of, uh, as a country, not saying about university, our university, we are kind of young, uh, and, uh, uh, young fellows in this area. So, uh, 
we know basically, I mean, people know what has to be done, but between knowing what has to be done and being able to do it, there is some, some time difference. Other points, I, th I would say there is a discussion in Brazil of different approaches. Just to give one example, the issue of neutrality. Uh, yesterday and today you said the innovation authority is neutral. It means if it's good science, good technology, promising market, I don't care what it is, I don't have uh, uh, preconditions established 20% for that and 30% of that. Here in Brazil, uh, there has been a long-standing discussion about neutrality. It means horizontal uh, uh, consideration or defining uh, areas that uh, uh, basically government considers that they are priority areas and funding them. And the argument has been that as there is not much money in total, if you are open to everybody, uh, it means that uh, you have a lot of resources distributed, but uh, not really an enough uh, consideration uh, for the needs of a specific one. Yeah. So I have a question. Why the government thinks they know better? Oh, oh that is a question. Uh, you'll find people, no, yeah, you'll find people who'll say uh, exactly what you said. The government uh, is made also of humans and humans make errors and there is a high concentration of humanity in government so there is a high concentration of errors. Others say, well, government has a role of uh, looking uh, uh, for the strategic uh, interests of the country and so it is, I would say, they're, uh, what they're doing, they're doing uh, kind of a mandate. So th I'm saying this is a discussion. You have you have the two tribes. Yeah. I, I just want to add, uh, because there are two topics where the government f is putting specifically money for specific things. Uh, but I, I just, I just uh, comment ab about that. But there are strategic mess, uh, projects in Israel, but they are not under the innovation issue. Because the innovation issue is something that you have to deal with both market and technology and science. And if you don't have good science in specific field, what will you do? Just invest in something which is not good? Now, I want just um, to, to comment about two things which are very small, but one is uh, we have a special track for the sort of disabled, where we don't look at the market and we just look on the needs, for, but it's, it's a small fund. And uh, normally this, this uh, Many technologies which are which are can which get which are approved based of all our other considerations are also relevant for people disabled and, and so they are good good market and good science so so this is but always we look on good science so if the good if the science and the team are not good it they will not get grant but sometimes the market is not good enough but still only for this specific uh, mission. And also we have a small program for improving the public services. And that's mainly based on digitalizing things, on digital technology that can improve the services of, the, of public, uh, mostly ministers, but any public institutions. So this is also something which is not market-based, but it's definitely technology and team-based. So for this, the government decided they want to advance this to things, it's not a lot of money, but you still, it's also still based on competition because many programs, they don't say that, okay, X will, get, will be going to the Ministry of Education and Y will be going to the Ministry of Health. No, it's also based on... on, on uh, yeah. Quality. Quality. Uh, so, I mean, uh, there are things are different. Just give one example, and obviously, it's good to hear different uh, different perspectives. The, 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 my last uh, 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 comment before thanking you is really a, a question. Uh, if you if I remember, you have uh, chief scientists in different ministries. For instance, you have a chief scientist in the Minister of Health. Just to give an example. And uh, because yesterday the issue was health, and you are from health too. So, I mean, 
uh, you're, I, I understand that you're talking about innovation and not science and health is, I don't know, maybe healthcare, but there is a connection between all this. Uh, so yeah. what, what is the connection? I would say, is there a forum, forum of the chief scientists in general? Uh, I mean, how, how does this uh, institution called chief scientist and now uh, in the Ministry of Economy Innovation Authority, how, uh, how does this... We still have chief scientists. Uh, one of uh, the, the chairman of the mm. Innovation Authority is also a chief scientist. So okay, so he has two titles. Anyhow, so, okay, person. wonderful. So uh, how, how, how do these people, do they meet, do they have a common uh, uh, goal? I mean, anyhow, how, how so, does this so work? So chief scientists in ministries have budget for research, which is very much relevant to, to the ministry's need. It's not a big budget, it's a small budget. This is a committed budget for the ministry's need. And the, minister, the chief scientist is the Minister of Agriculture who have budget to advance certain things that he is interested in agriculture. This is not innovation and it's, this is not a contribution to the economy as I mentioned before. This is done under the Minister of Economy. Now, obviously you can do innovation also in agriculture, also in, in, in health, also in, in, in uh, clean tech or, or uh, so, so, so it's, but the criteria are different. The criteria are, are towards uh, getting uh, companies, getting companies that will make revenue, that will have good technologies. Now, I'm, we are in very good contact with the chief scientist at the Ministry of Health. He has a budget for researchers, not big budget. We help him, we, are, we, we participate in some of his evaluations team and the uh, teams. But this is a different type of budget and different purposes. However, it's nice because many times I saw their proposal and by the end of the proposal they said, okay, by the end of the time, when, when, I'll, uh, when I'll do what I'm proposing to do and using the grant that I'll get, I'll be ready for the chief so for the Israel Innovation Authority applied research program. So this is sometimes earlier than that, and there is always contact between them. So people know we are, we are talking to each other. There used now about forum of chief scientists. There used to be a forum of chief scientists. I'm not sure if it's still operating. I don't know. I really don't know. Okay, so if there is any other question, please uh, make it. No? Okay, so uh, once again, uh, thank you very much, Ora, for sharing with us this conversation, the insights about uh, the practice uh, in Israel that you have so uh, well in your day-to-day uh, -day and uh, could bring it so well, to, uh, could, could share it with us so, so nicely too. Thank you very much for all of you to coming on a Friday afternoon here and uh, being with us. Uh, and uh, as usual, we also uh, uh, taped this uh, uh, conversation and uh, in a, a couple of weeks, the uh, tape will be available in the internet, in the Mediateca of the Institute of Advanced Studies. I will also like to use opportunity to thank not only Marina and the School of Medicine, but also our staff. I see Claudia I see Georgi, I see Sergio, uh, Leonor was here taking pictures. So thank you very much uh, for all the help. And uh, we hope that uh, this hour and a half was useful for everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you.